The weather for today's mission, sir, is being influenced principally by two storms, one of which is now west of Ireland and the other is over the target at Berlin. Respect, however, for takeoff and assembly that there will be just small amounts of cloud in the base areas. Uh, during the day, the low cloud will remain constant in small amounts until about 1600 hours when it will begin to encroach on first division. By 1700 hours, we expect eight to ten tenths of low cloud, base at a thousand feet, top six to eight thousand in first division with light rain. The upper cloud will be spreading in from the west and all bases will have ten tenths of high cloud with a base at around ten to fifteen thousand feet, tops of thirty thousand feet by sixteen hundred hours. On the bomber course as they depart, they'll have just small amounts of low cloud until they reach the Zyder Z, at which point the cloud amounts will increase to about an average of eight tenths of cloud until they get to about eight degrees east. At eight degrees east, we expect the cloud to become generally more broken so that the average cloud cover over the central German plain will be about five to seven tenths of cloud in large patches with large clear areas. We uh, feel with some confidence that at least part of the force on the main target at Berlin and on uh, Magdeburg will catch, will get visual bombing. On withdrawal, cloud conditions will be similar. And when the forces reach the Heligoland Bight, they will encounter 10 tenths of high cloud with a base at about 20,000 feet. That will lower along their route into bases. And the bases on return, the second and third divisions, will have fine conditions with the cloud base at 18,000 feet approximately. The first division will have rain and the ceilings at 1,000 feet. Visibility will be one to two miles in the first division area, three to five miles in the second and third divisions. That's awesome. Those vapor trails are heading for the capital of the Reich, while other American heavies were on their way to Magdeburg at the same time. The weather prophets had proved very accurate, and the bombing of Berlin was done under pretty well ideal conditions. Thanks to many previous attacks by the Royal Air Force and the Americans, Berlin was already the most bombed city in the world. But now, starting at midday and spread over only three quarters of an hour, Berlin received 2,500 tons, an American record, though the RAF have twice dropped bigger loads on Berlin. The Huns like things to be done in a colossal way, but it's just possible that this bombing exceeded their wishes or expectations. It all went down into Berlin's White Hall where the Nazi bosses were believed to be directing their losing battle against the Red Army. It's reasonable to suppose, too, that 2,500 tons delivered in broad daylight are not calculated to increase Hitler's popularity in a city already crowded with refugees. Anyway, a number of railway stations were hit, as well as administrative offices near the Wilhelmstrasse and Unter den Linden. Down there, they now have fireworks of a different kind from those witnessed by a jubilant people in the good old days of 1938-1939. As the Red Army approaches from the east, as bombs crash down from Allied planes, as the fires spread and the refugees increase, Nazi leaders raise the old cry of fight to the last. But in one respect, they have changed their tune. No longer do they call Churchill, Stalin, and Roosevelt military idiots. They've now been transformed into arch-criminals. In fact, of course, they know that the big three have beaten them, and they're afraid. 